pretty sure um, uh, that is very, very good insight. That's the first time I've actually been presented that um, that angle. Yeah, yes, brother, yes. Everybody, we are live again, back to back. Uh, thank you for coming on to search for a Hoo Hoo uh, show. And today we have brother Anari Singbe. Did, did I say the last name right? Correct, uh, brother. Singbe is right. Singbe. Uh, brother, you're from Sierra Leone, correct? Yes, sir. Now, I wasn't born in Sierra Leone, uh -huh. but I'm, I'm Mende. Uh -huh. um, what I understand. So uh, when I come now, when I come to Sierra Leone, uh -huh. all right, will I be accepted by the Mende family? Uh, you'll definitely be accepted by the Mendes, the Creoles, the Timendes, the Sosas. Okay. You, you'll My be welcome, brother. All right. Um, Sierra Leoneans don't often go picking fights with other people. Um, uh -huh. Folks come picking fight. Well, we don't even want to fight, really. You know, well, that's we're, that's enjoying the sun, we're enjoying the beach. We right. enjoy some diamonds. We don't really care about the diamonds, but then people just come over and, you know, and want to start stuff. Right. right. Um, look, I really appreciate this conversation, number one. Um, this is the first time that I've gotten a chance to have a conversation with, an, you know, a motherland, an African original brother. Um, no, 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 no. I, listen, I'm, pro I'm, I'm, I'm a black American. Nice. I'm, probably, I'm probably the most African black American that you'll ever meet. Oh, nice. <laughs> I thought you'd mention that you were from um, um, Senegal or something. Well, I'm always there, and I plan on buying, move, re relocating there. But I'm always okay. there. Yeah, it's just like I said. I'm, I'm my here we go. My body's here in America, but my spirit's okay. in Africa. If that makes uh, sense. All right, cool. Well, well look, um, the, the compliment isn't lessened. All right, I uh -huh. really appreciate having this conversation. Um, I've said it plenty of times before. No black media talks tech, so it's it, it's going to be the onus on folks like yourself. Um, who reach out and bring intelligent conversation to your peers and your community. Uh huh. I appreciate it. So, like I said, like we were the, uh, talking offline, I was scrolling through my uh, my timeline on Facebook, and I noticed this brother was discussing uh, crypto, but more from a, I would say, African centered space. And uh -huh. a lot of people have been talking about it. But like I said offline, this is my only concerns about crypto. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, during 08, 07, somewhat 06, when before the real estate hit the fan, the shit hit the fan for real estate, uh -huh. all of my friends, my black friends, you know, I love my people, uh -huh. they were all of a sudden mortgage professionals. They were flipping houses, uh -huh. you know, they wanted to flip houses. Uh -huh. And when it hit the fan, they lost. When I say they lost, they lost big. Yeah, true that. Now let's talk about crypto uh -huh. and Bitcoin. Everybody and they mama. Uh -huh. When I say everybody and they mama, the janitor, you know, they talk about taking out their life savings, selling uh -huh. their houses uh -huh. to get some Bitcoin. True that. To me, that's a, a, a red flag. Uh -huh. And you know, and it, of course they talk about the tulip, um, Tulip mania and all that good stuff. Tulip mania. Yeah. Uh, and then I forgot the name of the investor, but a while back, you know, back in the 80s or 70s, he said yeah. once his shoe shine boy started giving him stock advice, that's when he pulled out the stock market and then the stock market crashed immediately huh. after that. Interested. When people come to you with the concerns like this um. in regards to crypto. What are your what would be your rebuttal or how would you address it? Well, look, um, at, at this stage, to be quite honest with you, um, with the unprecedented transfer of wealth that's going on. Um, so here's the difference between the crypto space and the mortgage industry or traditional stock market crashes and so on and so forth. Right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, in the past, the data has always been manipulated. Okay. It doesn't matter if it's a stock market, Wall Street, or whatever. It's always it, it, um, these crashes happen because someone is doing funny math, right? Okay. Um, in the crypto space, it's a little bit different because the product itself is a math product. You cannot really, um, you know, you can't tell people that there's 38 million bitcoins when there's only 18 million in circulation. People are going to do the math, right? Oh, uh, okay, okay. Um, now, that doesn't mean that they're not going to be market cycles, right? Now, it's up to you to decide if you want to participate in these profit cycles or not. 
Um, but it's not like a, a, a housing crash and so on and so forth because you actually have a legitimate use case technology that is going to keep going regardless what happens. So for example, um, during the housing market, if the homes that were on the market, right, um, were designed to save lives and grandmas and um, they had like this incredible use case that no other home could actually satisfy your living situation. You want to do everything you can to keep that going. Right. Right. Um, and if it does tank down, it doesn't impact you as bad because that house is still very, very important to you. Matter of fact, so important to you that you don't care that you just lost half its value. Right. Right. So there's a little bit of a difference between a tangible, valuable item and something that, you know, um, that can be data manipulated. Okay. So we'll get to my next question. And if I cut you off, I apologize. How is, how is crypto uh, tangible? All right. Um, so, uh, look, it, it really all depends on the side of the conversation that we're coming from. Right. Um, it, I, I would like for this to be a, um, an engaging, productive conversation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, if it's coming from the side where we're still trying to convince skeptics. Okay. Uh, at this stage, um, you know what? Uh, if, they, if the skeptics are not paying attention to, uh, attention to data, then there's nothing we can do about that. Right? Okay. okay. Let them be. They're drowning. All right. Okay. They okay. want to stay behind, back on the beach. They're good. They don't want to read any data at this point. Okay. Now, if we're talking about the people who are genuinely curious. Oh, yes. We've at least went out and bought five bucks in Bitcoin. You're not intimidated by the number. All right, you're willing to exercise your curiosity and say, look, you know what? it's five bucks in Bitcoin. I, I can spend five bucks in Bitcoin a day just to find out how this thing is going to work. Right. Right. Um, now, if we want to engage with those folks and actually play a part in their better understanding or play a part in, in their better wealth um, participation in the space, then I'm all for that. Yes. Uh, I, I, I'm coming from a sincere space and people in the chat are coming in from a sincere space. Okay. Uh, it's just that was just some of the, the questions. Uh, me, myself, uh, and we're going to get into your product, of course. Uh, it, it, I, don't know, it, I don't know if it's just me, but trying to get verified on Coinbase and some of these other platforms uh -huh. is so hard, bro. Yeah. Like, I, I'm still like, I, I sent all my information, uh -huh. and they always kick it back. And I'm like, look, I mean, what do you want me? What do you guys want me to do? I'm like, Tyrese, what do you want from me? <laughs> like, you know, like I got you, you got my IDs, my social. Oh, you gonna start singing, man? <laughs> it's just like, goodness. There's another site. Uh, they have a coin called, I think it's Tether, uh -huh. uh, where it's based on the USD. Yeah. I'm like number two thousand in Q, and that was yeah. three months ago. So yeah. it's like, I want to get in. It's uh -huh. this verification process is like, for God's sake, like, I mean, can I just give y'all some money and y'all just give me some crypto? <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, just, just make it simple. Yeah, true that, true like, like, the thing is, it's harder to get verified uh -huh. in the crypto space than it is. Like, I have on my phone, I have Stash and I have Acorn. Valid, valid, valid. Completely simple. Valid. Easy. The All crypto right. space is like, golly, I just want to buy some coins. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. got some money. Like, but, but go ahead. I'm sorry. I just had to vent a little bit. No, no, because you're absolutely right. Go ahead. You're, you're definitely right, brother. Because in the crypto space, they want you to show baby pictures. They want, to, want you to come back with a picture of your grandma. And I, I understand the frustration, right? Um, but keep in mind, again, if you read the Bitcoin white paper, uh -huh. Nowhere did it mention a Coinbase. Nowhere did it mention some institution for you to go and buy your bitcoins from. Mm. Right? The very first, I think, I think it's probably the very first line. The first two lines is it tells you it's a peer-to-peer -peer system. It's me doing business with you. Right. Right. So the reason why you're having these pain points is because you don't have enough friends and family around you that you can hit up and be like, "Hey, look, I'm looking to buy fifty bucks in Bitcoin right now." Uh, hey, look, um, I saw your Facebook post. I, I, I saw that you, um, you bought Bitcoin last week. I'm looking to cop 200, right? You already made your profit. I'll give you the 200 in cash. You give me the 200 in Bitcoin. Now, once you have a network like that, then you're not going to have any verification process um, for problems whatsoever because you're not supposed to be going through a third party in the first place. Wow. Right? The, 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 oh, the, there it is. All right. So right now, you got, the, you got a lot of people violating the number one rule of crypto. Never let somebody else hold your bitcoins, right? 
Now, um, 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 to be fair, we can say never let somebody else hold your Bitcoins for an extended period of time. Right. Right. Sure, you need to load it up onto an exchange. You need to do this. And you, you need to move it every once in a while. But don't just keep all your money on Coinbase. Don't just keep all your money on some um, um, wallet that you don't own the private keys to. Right. So right. this goes back to folks just take stepping back for a second. Ho, ho, ho. I know this money is good in the crypto thing. But let me just get a little bit of understanding of exactly how I'm supposed to use this thing. If people did that, then you, um, you, you wouldn't have that frustration. Brother, we, we should have did this on the onset. Can you give people just some background on who you are, where you're from, and how you got involved in the, uh, involved in the crypto space? And then also, too, go into your project as well. Okay. Uh, um, I am Anari Singh Bay. Um, I love to build cool things. Um, I didn't start out as a um, coding nerd. Um, I'm building apps and websites. Mm -hmm. I might have just started out as an um, ideas guy, right? Um, you, you know, I was that kid that always had an idea going on, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I was also that kid that would leave the basketball court at 6 o'clock because the season finale of Star Trek was coming on, wow. right? So I had a little bit of that uh, uh, nerd curiosity growing up. Now, eventually, um, I decided to, um, you know, start having some of my ideas be pulled, put into practice. I would hire developers in India to build things for me. Um, they got too expensive after a while, and I just said, you know what, um, if they can do it, I can do it. So right. I hit up Google and taught myself how to code, hmm. right? I code JavaScript, AngularJS, PHP. Google is the best university on the planet. I don't care, Stanford, Harvard, the hell with that. Google is the best university on the planet. I open 24 hours, hmm. <laughs> right? Um, shortly after I taught myself how to code, I built a product called Gamerholic. Um, this was a heads up gaming platform, me versus you for 10, 20 bucks in Madden, Call of Duty on the Xbox or PlayStation, right? But there's always going to be that one cat that loses a $200 game and then call their bags and say, I didn't do it. That wasn't me that just lost for $200 in Madden. And um, charge back became a problem. You, and you got charged back on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charged back to a major problem in that space, man. All right, all right. Uh, it came to the point where at that time I was in Washington, I was in the Washington DC area in the DMV. Uh -huh. um, I had to make a decision. Okay, am I either go, just going to close up shop, or do I pack up and take my talents to San Francisco, the tech capital of the world? All right. I did just that. Um, this was early, um, late two thousand nine, early two thousand ten. Uh -huh. um, and there I discovered Bitcoin because I was explaining that chargeback problem to uh, one of my developers, co developer comrades, and the first thing he said was Bitcoin, right? Um, now, it made sense to me back then, right? Uh, and the reason why it made sense to me back then wasn't necessarily so because of, of the math of the technology. I just found it really, really curious that as Barack got into office, all of a sudden we got this new money. Right. Um, I, I, I'm not trying to make it sound like a, like a conspiracy, this, that or the other, but that's just way too much of a coincidence for me. In the era of a very sophisticated president, all of a sudden you have this very sophisticated, sophisticated currency come about by who knows who. Nobody knows who, um, who put it up. Uh -huh. But it's clearly African math behind it. Right. And that kept me intrigued. Um, I decided to make Gamerholic a Bitcoin gaming platform. And shortly after that, in 2014, I created the very first cryptocurrency for video games called Gamerholic Coin. And this wow. was traded on Bittrex for over two years before it was delisted earlier this year. Right? Why, why um, was that? Let me ask you. Well, look, look it, it, it's, it, it takes a lot of effort to, keep, to make a, a, a coin successful. Right. Right. Um, back in 2014, it wasn't as many serious coins out and about. Um, it was a lot of coins that were coming out where somebody pre-mined a million of it, someone pre-mined this much of it. Um, it was it, it was it was it, it was a legitimate uh, um, gold rush at that point, like early early on, right? Um, The fact that it was on Bittrex for two years is a, it, it is a very, very good thing right. that gaming cryptocurrency lasted that long. However, going around educating people on what the hell Bitcoin is and how it works with gaming, you got to convince gamers, they're always high. you all got to convince game developers, they don't believe right. anybody. Right? Um, and that just took on, um, took on a, a lot of resources. Right? It's no different than, than, than being on the NASDAQ. If your stock isn't performing well, your stock will get removed. Right. 
Did, uh, did you have a question or? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just, I'm just listening. Go ahead, brother. Um, so now, uh, once the coin was removed, we're like, okay, I can get it back on another exchange. That's not a problem. Um, it, it is more than Bitrix. It's Polonex, um, Kraken, Cryptopia, Yobit, and the list goes on, right? And most exchanges, you can just pay them, you know, a thousand bucks. Um, some of them are asking for half a Bitcoin, whatever, for you to get uh, your coin listed on the exchange. We could easily do that. Right. Or we could take a step back for a second and actually re-examine and say, well, if we put this back on the exchange, how are we going to make it extremely successful this time around, especially knowing that it's going to be on a lesser exchange, right? Some of the lessons that I learned in creating your own cryptocurrency is, number one, speculators are not your users. Right? The people who are trading on, on Bitrex and Polynex, they're not going to take five minutes to come play your video game or use your right. product. It just doesn't work that way. Trying to get some money. Right. Um, and so I'm like, well, a cryptocurrency, you should be able to use it across all uh, um, verticals. It's, it shouldn't just be confined to a space. So it was a branding mistake that I made in confining a cryptocurrency to the gaming space. Right. So now um, we're going to reinvent a little bit. The product that we're launching is called OWO. O-W-O. OWO oh. literally means money in Yoruba. Okay. Uh, we are creating a cryptocurrency for the world of automation because mm. um, the world of automation is going to have way more transactions than humans. Way more. Now, but let me, let me ask you a question to cut you off. IOTA. Now, is it their crypto for uh, automation okay. too? So yeah. Much? But go ahead. Go ahead. I just, go ahead. I, I, look, look, look. Um, IOTA is a very solid product, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I say that uh, with the, um, the limited information I have about uh, 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 on it now, right? Um, so they're always going to be. Uh, let's just keep it the two types of cryptocurrency, folks. Right. You're either going to be a cryptocurrency purist. You stick to the white paper. You understand the vision, the philosophy, the good nature of that Bitcoin white paper. Right. Okay. This is our modern day Bible. If you're a Bitcoin purist, right. And then you have another sector, folks, who are really just interested in the profit opportunities in the crypto space, and that's perfectly fine. Right. So if you are a Bitcoin purist, you're not going to be a fan of IOTA because IOTA is not a cryptocurrency that you can mine. It's already 100% pre-mined. The folks who launched, who created IOTA, they already own all the coins that are going to be re released on the Tangle. The Tangle is IOTA's version of the blockchain. They don't call it a blockchain, they call it a Tangle because technically it's not really a blockchain, right? Um, so if you have a cryptocurrency that you can't mine, then you have willingly decided that you are not going to participate in the most profitable environment in the cryptocurrency space. You're not going to allow people to actually make a profit on your currency. Right. Right. The cryptocurrency purists are going to have a problem with that. You can't own all the coins and then make it so that nobody else can even mine and get a little bit of it. Right. So in the world of IoT, IOTA is going to work great because they don't have any transaction fees. It's intended to be instantaneous payments. So if you want to do communications, um, you know, you, you want to turn off your light switch securely at a distance, you want to start your car securely at a distance, you'll be able to do that through IOTA, possibly, assuming um, that um, that coin remains affordable. Um, and assuming that there are no more techn um, 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 technological hurdles because there was a, um, a bug that was discovered in the IOTA framework, I think, about two and a half months ago. Okay. But it's a solid product. Right. Go, go ahead, brother, into, into your, uh, your, your, your product. Oh, oh uh, in, in, in talking about OWO. Right. Yeah, OWO. So yes, OWO being a cryptocurrency for the world of automation, um, there's a specific benefit that we're adding to that um, environment. So first, we're introducing two brand new things to the cryptocurrency space, right? Um, now, I, I, I got to pause for a second because I, I, I said this in the last video. Um, if your audience is, um, you know, listening to a black person talk about creating a cryptocurrency, and they're expecting me to say that I'm creating a black coin or I'm creating a coin for the black world. Um, I'm not going to be that entrepreneur that you hear that from. Okay. Because, you know, it's a pretty big, it's, it's a pretty big world, right? right? If you want to create a currency, you want everybody on the planet to be able to participate in it. Absolutely. Because actually, that's how you, you know, you, you generate the kind of wealth that, you, um, that you're hoping to get out of the, cri the cryptocurrency space. I, I, don't, I don't think it's about, you know, creating a black coin. 
It's mm -hmm. just, you know, somebody said it in the chat room, let me, you know, and, and this makes perfect sense, is, you know, we're so innovative uh, that, you know, but we're told, or you don't see our faces as being innovative. So yeah. just when you see a black person at the head of creating, you know, or participating or, you know, taking control of this uh, technology, it's, it's, it's amazing. Like, we love it. You know, so it doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, man, this black, this better be a black coin for, for black folks only. No, it's just, dude, we got a brother out here who is doing big things in this space. And that should be acknowledged. And we better support him. But go ahead. Appreciate that. I, I, I genuinely, genuinely appreciate that. Um, it's just that sometimes I have to add in that little pretext uh, uh -huh. because you always get that question. Well, why don't we create a coin for Africa? Why don't we create a coin for the black world? Right. Um, if, if, even if you were going to do that, you don't come out and say you were going to do that. Right. right. Uh -huh. um, because right now I'm in my office. Right. Um, this uh -huh. is pretty much uh, a, a, a 24 hour operation. Um, 50 years ago. When you have this many people who look like you and I creating a cryptocurrency, FBI would have raided this office 50 years ago. Right. Like, no events or buts about it. FBI, CIA, Sheriff's Office, all of them would have came. Right. So I don't take lightly um, um, the opportunity or the space that we're, um, that, that we're working in. Right. But it's important for us to know that if you are going to participate in a much more enlightened space, Right. We have to accept that we are participating in a global environment. It's not just a couple of people buying Bitcoin. It's anyone anywhere in the world at any time of day who can get their hands on Bitcoin. Yes. Right. So with that said, um, OVO is a cryptocurrency that we're creating for the world of automation. Um, there are two really, really cool technologies that we're actually introducing to the Bitcoin space. No other cryptocurrency has these features. The very first one is called a smart address. Uh, what we mean by that is, right now, if you wanted to sell that um, that sh um, that, that um, um, shirt, and uh -huh. you told me, you know, um, ten bucks, right. right, and you gave me the Bitcoin address to send the ten bucks to, when I get the Bitcoin address, I don't see the shirt. Um, uh, it doesn't have a picture. It doesn't have any any product information whatsoever about it. Right? These are uh -huh. dumb static cryptocurrency addresses as compared to the OO smart address, which will allow you to append additional information to your address. Mm -hmm. So when you send me your OO address, if you wanted to add a picture of the shirt, you can add it. If you want to add a web URL to where I'd be able to buy the shirt, you'll be able to append all that information into the address. Now, this becomes very, very, very cool for machine to machine transactions, mm -hmm. right? Um, are you familiar with smart contracts? I am, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty much the, Technology behind Bitcoin, uh, blockchain, right? Um, um, I right or wrong? Definitely utilize the blockchain, um, but smart contracts themselves are mostly executed on the Ethereum platform. Um, if IOTA goes to the wayside, Ethereum was the leading candidate to to rule the world of uh, of automation. Okay. Right? Uh, but smart contracts can, can be expensive. A smart contract, me and you, can get an illegal agreement where we say, "I'm going to loan you ten bucks." I want that 10 bucks to come back to me in 30 days at 2% interest that's taken from this account. Mm -hmm. And regardless if I'm dead or alive, that contract is going to execute. Right. Right. Um, this is an incredible new world that we're going to move into in the, uh, with smart contracts because lawyers are gone. Accountants are gone. Pretty much probably your, your freaking landlord is gone because they can just write a contract for you and, um, you know, your rent is taken out. It's paid by Ethereum. Right. Wow. Um, now, if you're going to do the smart contracts piece of it, that's going to be expensive for you as a business. Right now, nobody knows what the Ethereum transaction fees are going to be. You had a game of freaking cats almost crash the Ethereum um, 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 blockchain a couple of weeks ago. Right. right. Um, with the smart address piece, if all that information is embedded in the address, then it makes it much easier for machines to consume this address. They don't have to execute a smart contract. They can just get all the information that they need directly from the address. Right, so smart addresses are going to be a really, really cool way to do atomic swaps in the future, which to address the problem that you discussed a second ago uh, of exchanges requiring way too much verification. If you're able to do atomic swaps without an exchange, I can trade my OO for your Bitcoin without going through Bitrix, Polynex, or whatever, then that solves all your identity problems. Right. Right? And smart, smart addresses are going to make atomic swaps possible in that manner. 
right? So that's the very first feature that we're introducing to the world of cryptocurrency via the OWO blockchain. The second one is, um, actually, you're not, let's do three, because I really like the concept of browser mining. Well, go ahead, brother. I mean, the, the, the platform is yours. Yeah, well, well, uh, so browser mining is going to go a long way in changing on how we interact on the web, mm -hmm. right? So Monero, Monero right now is trading at 320 bucks, right? Right. The reason why Monero is so popular, or one of the reasons why it's so popular, is because there are a lot of websites that are mining Monero the minute you go to that website. They're not telling you, right? As soon as you land on that website, they have a Monero plugin in their website that actually starts using your computer power to mine Monero for them. Mm -hmm. So compared to advertising, if you are a website that gets a million users on a daily basis, you're going to make a fortune as compared to ads. Right. Right. So a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, you may have heard about this where CBS and Showtime, one of their employees actually embedded a Monero plugin in the Showtime website. So you go there, you're watching a movie for two hours, you're watching this movie and your laptop is being used to mine cryptocurrency that entire two hours without you knowing about it. Right? Wow. Now, this is an incredible economy opportunity, but we just have to be a little bit more transparent about it with the user. So we are introducing permissioned browser mining that encourages participation from publishers and um, webmasters, right? So if you own a WordPress blog, um, you've done the best you can to try to drive traffic and, and get money from the ads, that is gone by just replacing the OWO JavaScript plugin into your website that you can now start using to earn revenue every time somebody comes to your website and they're doing so willingly for you. Hmm. The minute they land on your page, they see a pop-up window that says, this website doesn't want to show you ads. They will prefer to monetize by binding with your computer. Do you approve? You click yes or you click no, right? Permissioned browser mining is going to be a game changer, especially for the part of the world where I'm from, where everybody has a cell phone, right? If you can mine cryptocurrency on this, right, Africa will, go, will literally be transformed within 15 years economically. Because everybody in Africa, everybody uses their cell phone for everything. Everybody has a cell phone. You rarely see uh, desktops when I'm at my friend's house in Africa. Somebody might have a laptop here and there. But when I say everybody lives off of this, yeah. everybody lives off of this in Africa. Yeah. Right. And phones are only going to get more powerful. So eventually they will be able to do some, um, you know, if there's a kid in Sierra Leone who could make two bucks just by leaving their browser running on their phone, mm -hmm. oh, I'm cool with that. Right. I'm very, very happy with that. Mm. Right. That's so all. that's what the features that we're introducing with, uh, with, with the OWO blockchain. And then the very last piece is just focusing more so on the circulating supply than the total supply of coins. Um, the white paper is available on the website. It's mm -hmm. OWO.world, O-W-O dot world, mm -hmm. right? We just, um, put the, we just put the link in the, uh, the chat room. Please. Right. So OWO.world is an automated trading platform where bots make trades for you 24-7 on Bittrex. Right. So if we're going to create a cryptocurrency for the world of automation, it'll be cool if we actually presented an example application that you could use right now. You could touch it. You could feel it. You could play with it. You could actually see that these people are capable of building cool things. Right. And then you can decide if you want to participate in growing O or not by participating in the DMO or just by using the product. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, how would one, um, you know, how would one, I guess, go ahead and start purchasing coins on your site? Uh, well, um, so, OWO, the blockchain, will be released. Um, um, I'm aiming for the latest March of next year. Okay. Right. Um, normally, folks would go through what's called an ICO, an initial coin offering, as a way to fund their product. Correct. Right. Um, initial coin offerings aren't necessarily legal in the U.S. Um, the SEC is going to put up a fuss and so on and so forth about it right now, but 
I'm confident within the next two, um, two to five years, I think uh, ICOs will become the norm on how um, you're able to grow your business. Right. Right. So rather than fighting um, um, legal hurdles, we decided to invent the DMO or discounted mining offer. Okay. Right. As a Bitcoin purist, uh, I'm going to participate in some ICOs, but I don't always encourage them because if you can mine, you don't need to do an ICO. Right. If you can mine the cryptocurrency, you don't need to do an ICO. So we're saying that we will mine these many coins for you at this price. And right now it's five cents each uh, per OO. Now, when you go on OO.world, again, it's an automated trading platform. The world, the, the, the uh, world of automation is fast approaching. Right. Um, don't get worried about folks saying that robots are going to take your jobs and so on and so forth. They, they, they're definitely going to take your jobs. Right. But robots or the world of automation is also going to earn you an income. Right. Almost everything you do moving forward or everything you should do moving forward should be automated at some point. If you can automate the fact that every weekend your clothes get washed, you would do it. Who's right. not going to do that? <laughs> right. Uh, I'm so if, right you now. Auto, well, if you could automate that 24 hours out the day, there's some kind of automated process that's trying to flip you money. Then you do that, right? So the bots run on OO. You're gonna need at least one OO. You can buy one OO for five cents. You don't have to go buy a hundred OO, a thousand OO. You can buy one for five cents, and that would give you access to fifty free bots. When you sign up, you get two free bots. But as long as you're holding at least one OO, you will have access to fifty bots. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now there was a question in the chat room. All right, so. Africa. We have all the natural resources on the planet. Uh -huh. Why not focus on, I guess, reclaiming okay. or taking back over control of our natural resources versus moving more towards technology? All right. So um, uh, we've all heard about the out of Africa theory, right? Okay, yes, uh, yeah. Some, the, uh, the, the um, historical evidence shows that there was a um, eventual migration out of the great continent, out of Eden, out of al Koblan, as it as, as he was originally called. Right. Um, so that may mean a couple of things. You have this amazingly beautiful continent with a whole lot of sun, not too much trouble, Right, um, you're not going to go hungry too long. You, you know, if you're starving, there's an animal that's going to cross your path at some point that you can whack around. Right, right. or you're going to come across a fruit tree somewhere where you can um, get yourself some mangoes and so on and so forth. Right, right. Um, the only reason why you would want to keep moving further and further and further uh, um, apart is because you know you may be having conflicts right um, or you want to travel um, um, to greener pastures or whatever the case so naturally um you may have a land right that by design requires people to spread out and in in, in order to have that effect there always has to be some kind of bump in our heads right um, right. It doesn't matter if it's um, um, from straight up ego or whatever it is. Clearly, globally, there's some there's some angst. There's something in here about black folk coming together and say, "Hey, what's up? Let's make let, let, let's make some big moves." Right. right. I'm not saying it's that way across the board, 100. percent However, if you look over the past 20, 30 years, we've yet to have an internet black billionaire. Right, um, th th that's a problem, right? Uh, in that twenty-five plus years, since that say, uh, oh, hello, is that, hold on, I think there's a, is there an echo? Is it echoing on your end? Test, test, test. Is that is that better? Okay, yeah. So let me ask you this: What um, when you say internet black million billionaire, what do, what do you mean specific, specifically? Well, um, you know, the Facebooks, the Googles, the Twitters, the this, the Instagrams, the so on and so forth, right? Now, would that include, like, the technology space? Because you have Robert Smith. Are you familiar with him? I, I am familiar with him, but I'm, I'm talking about, like, a person who launched a product um, from start to finish. Like, um, um, you know, our, our, our comparison Zuckerberg or our comparison um, Snapchat guy or our comparison Google guys, right? Mm -hmm. 
uh, where you launched a product that became a billion dollar sensation um, over a short period of time. Okay, gotcha. Okay, gotcha. Um, I'm not saying that there are no black billionaires. I'm just saying specifically for this space, we've yet to have that happen. And when you start looking into why this hasn't happened, um, you may start answering some of the, those questions as to why there's, there is, there's yet to be a, a focus on creating a cryptocurrency or realizing the massive opportunity that exists now um, to cut ourselves from any kind of financial dependence from anybody. Anywhere, right. right? So the fact that not a single African country has come about yet and said, hey, look, as much as we've been talking about this colonialism shit, we're right. going to give off, uh, we're going to create our own money. Right. Right. Um, that's a problem. That's a major, major problem. Right. Brother, where, where are you located? Somebody in the chat room was asking. Uh, I'm in Washington, D.C. right now. Okay. But you were in the Bay Area for a minute, correct? Yeah, um, I spent the last five, six years in San Francisco. Okay, let, let, let's um, and we could go back to crypto, but let's let's go into another topic real quick. I know me and you, I don't know, if we didn't kind of see eye to eye on it as far as Black America as a collective being a third world country. I, and I tell people this: I used to live in LA. Uh, I used to do mission work, outreach work on a, in an area in LA called Skid Row. Skid Row has the highest homeless population on the planet. I mean, not a planet, but in America, 85 to 90% of the people on Skid Row are black. Okay. I've never seen anything like Skid Row. I know you're in the Bay Area. You see Tent City and stuff like that. I've never seen nothing like that in the 11, 12 countries I've been to in Africa. If you ask me personally, if we took away government assistance, here in America, if we took away uh, credit, you know what I mean by credit, you know, credit cards and stuff like that, I think black people in America will be worse off than in Africa. Mm -hmm. I know I sent you that article in regards to uh, in Boston, the average um, net worth, I think it was, of black people in Boston was $8. And that's just not limited to Boston. That's the thing. Uh, I know there was like a UN envoy or someone from the United Nations or World Bank or something came to, uh, I think it was like Alabama or Mississippi. And they were like, look, there's no way this could be considered a first world country the way these, these conditions people are living in out here. What, what, are your, what are your thoughts on that? Like, am I just overgeneralizing? Am I uh, being, uh, um, I mean, what, just what are your thoughts on that? But look, uh, I can't take anything away from your experiences, brother. Uh -huh. right? um, what you've experienced is true to you, right? Um, now, we can debate the reasons as to why Skid Row is the way it is or why there's 10 cities um, all over San Francisco. Um, but I'm a take responsibility guy. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I am the influencer of everything big and small in my life. Uh-huh. Right. Mm -hmm. um, now, that's not to say that, you know, um, tomorrow somebody could give me, um, um, you know, a J that is lit, that is laced with something and, you know, it changes um, the way I interact with the world forever. Right. Or I can walk on? out the What's street, and, yeah, you know, I can walk out the street and I get hit by a bus or um, uh, and, and so on. Right. Um, but in taking responsibility. I have to first um, question the people I choose to follow, right? So for the most part, you could be describing a leadership problem that Black America has yet to, um, there's a massive void that was really just filled, um, you know, eight, 10 years ago once Barack got, uh, got perceptually in a play. It, 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 it's, but see, it's been longer than that. I think the void happened after civil rights. I don't Very know true. if people got the tent or got comfortable, Very but it's, it's been going, it's been going, I mean, out, outside of just the blatant racism, okay. you know, as far as economics, black wealth, it's been going down the drain. Very true, very true. Since then, but go ahead. Yeah, but I, I mean, uh, in, in taking responsibility, it really does go back to leadership, right? right. Um, and at some point, the people are going to have to take a step back Look around 
and see where these great leaders that you've been following for the past 20, 30 years, exactly where they've taken you, right? At some point, you're going to have to call out Louis Farrakhan, right? If, 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 if that is um, the de facto leader, the, the Farrakhans, the Sharptons, the Jacksons, and so on and so forth, if you're saying these are the de facto black voices, then the people at some point are going to have to be like, hey, look, um, where are you taking us? I mean, you look around, you got millions in jail, you got dead bodies everywhere, right? Um, exactly where are you taking us? Right. If the people don't stop at any point to ask that, then you, you, you're going to come across a, um, you know, a situation where it's now 2018 and you're looking around and you're like, wow, um, um, is Black America a, a third world country? Right? Because you've gone a long, long time without anybody demanding from their leadership that, hey, either you, you got to go, dog. You look at the performance, a million people in jail. There's no way that you're going to have a million people in jail and Jesse Jackson still be on TV and you not be pissed. That is absurd. But let me ask Farrakhan, you this. Get a, I'm, I'm picking up a freaking microphone when there's a million freaking brothers in jail. But this is the issue. And for some reason, black people refuse to hold our black leaders uh, accountable. Case in point, Barack Obama. You know, they, I mean, you bring up Barack Obama and point a finger at him. Black people are, will, will fight you, call you coon, ready to drag you through the streets. I mean, wh 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 why is that? It is always the give the brother a shot. I mean, come on, brother. Come on, brother. It, it, it really all depends on the leadership. Um, on the part of Barack, I, I am a fierce defender of, uh, of King Barack. Right, um, because the intellectual display that he put on board is going to be representative for the next 100, 200 years. Right, um, it gave us back our, and he gave us back our intellectual confidence. So um, um, him, um, I will fiercely defend as well. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, however, the other leaders who are not capable of doing any, you know, two percent, three percent of his accomplishments, you know, you, you got to call them out, man. Right. Um, now, it may be a little bit easier said than done because. Um, so it's no different than you were saying that, um, you know, going through Coinbase and the, the ID verification at various exchanges is really, really difficult mm -hmm. when there's a much, much easier route of you just getting your friends and family participating in the crypto space. Okay. Right. Um, in the black America environment. It is very, very, very tough for you to keep a stable black mind. And what I mean by that is, since you were yay big, the minute you start watching that television, you're being programmed and subconsciously manipulated to think you're not this, that, or the other. Right? Um, and the same thing with our, 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 our counterparts. Um, there's no white person on this planet who's been watching TV in America for over 20, 25, maybe even 5, 10 years, that does not have some kind of subconscious impression about another person. It's impossible, right? So I stopped being unrealistic and um, thinking that we live in a perfect world, even though I've pretty much made my subconscious autopilot to everything that's going on around me, right? It is going to be much, much harder mentally for you as a black person, or it should be much harder mentally for you as a black person because you want to keep this close, small group um, within your best interests, right? And you can't do that if, you know, the grocery store around the corner only sells products that are not from your community, mm. right? Now, the onus is on you to go on Amazon or to go on uh, buyblack.com and find products that were made um, uh, by black ma manufacturers. That's a lot harder for you. Right. right. So if we look into those re um, um, realities, then unless you're willing to turn off your TV or watch programs that are specifically designed to reinforce your subconscious, um, it, it, you know, you, 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 you're pretty much in line for a, um, for a very, very long mental um, battle um, in, in the U.S. as compared to um, anything else. Okay. So in, in, in what role can, I guess, cryptocurrency play in changing this reality? Well, um, I think we've seen it, right? Uh-huh. Redistributional wealth. Right. 
right? Um, redistribution of wealth is happening in an unprecedented way, right? Um, now, it depends on how um, we spend that money this time around. Because it, 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 it's still the same thing if you're getting Bitcoin and you're going to go buy Gucci. It's still the same thing. As if right, you're, if, right, exactly. Uh, okay, you, you, exactly. Right, that didn't change anything for you, <laughs> uh -huh. right? Um, however, if we're now participating in a much, much smarter environment and three of your homies are cryptocurrency aficionados, then chances are the three of you are going to have a sick-ass cryptocurrency portfolio, mm -hmm. right? Very, very carefully in the crypto space, the word has changed from save. You hear the word save a lot in the fiat space. Save your money, save, save, save. But in the crypto space, what do they tell you? Hold. What's the difference between saving and holding? Uh, right. I, the, the, I guess the difference is when you're saving, you're not really earning any interest. When you're holding, I mean, the values will go up. But, but, very, very true, very true. But uh, you, you're not really doing anything different. Right? Right, right, you would save that dollar. Now you're holding the cryptocurrency, but for whatever reason, the word "hold" seems to translate a little bit better in some people's minds and saves. So they're able to hold a cryptocurrency, but they're not able to save money. Right? So when these small nuances start actually like reprogramming the subconscious, that should have an incredible economic impact if your crew, your family, is all of a sudden holding. Uh, amongst all of you, you have a hundred dash, and dash all of a sudden overnight or within a month, two months, is now worth five thousand bucks. Your right. family is good, <laughs> right? Exactly. Uh, versus, versus, you know, a hundred dollars, five hundred dollars sitting in a bank account. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. I'm not doing nothing. No, no, no. Right. Um, so there are a lot of different economic differences that are coming about where. If, we, if you operate the way that you operated in the fiat era, if you operate the way that you operated in the internet era, um, then you know, you're know you not really gonna see the benefits. Mm -hmm. And when I say if you operate the way that you operate in the internet era, um, I specifically mean if you treat your blockchain entrepreneurs the way that you treated your internet entrepreneurs, then you're not gonna see any of the community benefits of the blockchain experience. Repeat that again and go into detail. When we say treat them like our internet entrepreneurs, what do you, what do you mean? All right, so um, I, I, I said this before. Right now, if you go to any black website, I don't care what it is. It can be the most flagship -est product of that you would think would pretty much consume the explanation of being black in America. Ebony, Essence, Vi, BET, The Root, Atlanta, whatever you want to call it, none of them have a tech section. None of them even have anything about Bitcoin oh, okay, okay, well, on their website. And let me stop you right there, though. Black media is dead in America. Yeah. Black mainstream media. I mean, Ebony is is completely washed. Yeah. I mean, instead of tech sections, they rather have how can black women find white men sections. I'm dead serious. I'm not lying. I'm dead serious. You saw what happened to Roland Martin on TV One. He got axed. Uh. Like black media is is done. There's no really no black owned media. It's all owned by white or non black corporations. Very very true. Black media is a wreck. So in regards to counting on mainstream black media like Ebony and Essence and helping us in building wealth, that's probably not going to happen anytime exactly. soon. So it's going to be platforms like this exactly. that are going to do it. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Because right. if you want to do the numbers on it, by not talking about Bitcoin the past 10 years, they've literally cost black America over a trillion dollars. That is a real number. Yes by never even mentioning the word Bitcoin anywhere on their pub uh, publications. Right. Right. Um, and um, just uh, take a quick um, sidetrack. Um, Go ahead. Who you fall in love with is who you fall in love with, uh, right? Um, but I always found it very, uh, a little bit frustrating that I would go to an Ebony or um, um, uh, uh, some of these other websites and they'll say that, um, you know, black women should look into this group or look into that group. It's never <laughs> African. Yeah, right. they never mention African. It's like right, you know, right. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's somebody dead. else completely, right? right. Black media. Well, that's why. Forget about the other billion black people on the planet. Let's right. immediately go jump ship, right? You can fall in love with whoever you want to fall in love with, but that messaging is a problem. Yeah, and it is. If you to the point, it was to the point. Now they're doing um, articles on how to make sure your white lover is not a white supremacist. It's just like, come on, man. Like, I mean. <laughs> uh, 
I'll be like, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, but whatever, whatever. That's that's another show. I can say, um, you can fall in love with whoever you want to fall in love with, <laughs> but um, as our own um, 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 folks, I, I, I just found it really, really interesting that the, the African was never um, um, presented as an option to um, um, to American black women. That, that, that's pretty frustrating. No, and, and, and I said this on my previous show, then we'll get back on, 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 on the subject matter. And I, I'm going to tell you why the African's not looked at as an option. Because African men are viewed as being abusive, uh, I'm gonna pronounce the word right because a lot of people were sending me emails correcting me. Misogynistic, or however you say it, you know, uh, African women are viewed as being oppressed. So that's why, you know, like African men, okay, are viewed as by these black feminist intellectuals um. as being worse than black American men. So that that that's why, unless you guys are like Eddie Murphy coming to America, and you guys just got just money and you're a king. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's different. Uh -huh. But yeah, but 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 that's why. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, well, look, I, I really hope that's not the, that, that's not the case. No, it, 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 uh, it, it, or, or, or I hope that that is no, not. No, listen, um, it's the um, case. The perception. It's the case. Like, and it, it, I just my past show. This is the issue. So. Uh -huh. Black intellectuals, black so-called black intellectuals, uh -huh. they will get pissed off at CNN, Fox News for stereotyping black people the wrong way. We'll get pissed off, all right? But then when these same news outlets stereotype Africa, they will take it and run with it as truth. I, pro I, I promise you, like, I pro I'm not making this uh, up. Trust me, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so yeah, so yes. That, that's how they a lot of them feel about African men. Like I said, unless you're not coming like Eddie Murphy, uh -huh. Zamunda, or uh, Black Panther, uh -huh. uh, you know, and you have all these resources to go, they're not going to look at you. Uh, 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 um, so, you're right. Uh -huh. Right. Um, I mean, I came to the stage when I was 10. Uh -huh. I had the, you know, the accent was, was heavy back then. Right. Um, I was probably at least two shades darker than I am now. So, uh, um, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um, it was a really, really cool experience initially when I um, when I first got to the states. Um, you do go through, go through a bit of an, an identity crisis. Right. Um, but then, at, at some point in my adult life, I um, I happily settled within my own identity. Uh -huh. um, however, that still doesn't mean that, um, um, you know, the, the assumptions about African men has, um, has gone away, right? Now, um, I don't know why that is, man. You Dude, know, I, I, um, I, I don't know why either. And, just, and then also, just getting these same, you know, black intellectuals i went to a predominantly black college hbcu uh i went to howard you can't tell them nothing you, know, you can't tell them nothing you know because it's like even then when it's like okay you have disposable income to travel okay america is racist you know they have donald trump it's racist uh -huh. you know they continue to stereotype black people the republicans and the liberals and the news outlets uh -huh. but i'm going to take my disposable income uh -huh. on my vacation and I'm going to go to Europe. How I would never step foot in Africa because I, I might get bit by a mosquito. And I heard this story of this lady that got bit by a mosquito, mosquito and she caught malaria and she died. And she and they, and they had issues trying to get the body back to America. Swear to God. Swear uh -huh. to God I'm not making any of this up. Uh -huh. And these are our black intellectuals uh -huh. that are running Ebony Magazine. Uh, Cornell West on deck. <laughs> and, then, and then you wonder why, you know, we're having why black uh, media is dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, black media is rap, man. But <laughs> uh, 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 that goes back to uh, um, the, the point that I was making earlier. Uh, if you went to any uh, of these black media sites, you're not going to see any intelligent conversation ongoing. Right. Um, so that is an incredible hurdle that I experienced as a tech entrepreneur. What? Right. Um, I did everything I was supposed to do. I taught myself how to code. I built a cool product. Um, there was a point of time when I wasn't, um, um, uh, you know, I probably wasn't the best citizen. Right. Um, I was listening to a bunch of rappers who were telling me to go um, um, do other economical enterprises. 
what we're not gonna say. <laughs> rappers gave me a lot of bad advice growing up, man. Right. I, uh, I didn't know pops. Right. All I had were the homies. The homies listened to the NWA and Jay Z and you know Tupac and there's it, it, you're gonna pick and choose um, the artistic content that you get. Obviously, amongst every single one of those um, 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 artists, you can pick and choose uh, content that is very very good. But they also have a lot of destructive content. Let, let, let's not pretend like like '90s rap was healthy. Looking back, now, right? Um, and so I took I took a lot of bad economic advice growing up from rappers. Right. I was popping bottles in the club. I was driving a way too expensive car. I was right. <sighs> yeah. It, it 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 happens, man. I mean, yeah, I yeah, yeah. it is what it is. Uh, I, I, I'm growing. I I made it out. You know, uh-huh. one locked up, didn't get killed. Listen to that nonsense. Uh-huh. But um, now. Um, you try to do everything right, pack up, move to San Francisco, we're going to go the entrepreneur out. Uh-huh. And then you find out that you actually have no support environment whatsoever. No. Nope. Right? So here is the process for, that I, I noticed for other communities that go to San Francisco. Go ahead. All right, when I touched down in San Francisco, I stayed at a place called the Startup House. The Startup okay. House was this big warehouse. It used to be an old porno studio. Then an Australian came, rented it out, made it look nice, and put bunk beds all over the place, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're a developer coming to San Francisco, you're guaranteed a cheap place to stay. You can pay 40 bucks a night for that bunk bed. You can pay 20 bucks to just sleep on the corner over there. Or how much ever um, 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 it is you can afford, you can find somewhere to lay your head for the evening. Right. right? So this Australian that set it up now has a pile of his Australian friends coming to the States. Mm. They got a cheap place to stay. He's already worked out some networks where he can make introductions to this investor, this business person, and so on and so forth. That is an ecosystem that is in place for folks, his homies, as soon as they touch down, they good, right? Indians do the same thing. Anybody can do the same thing. The Indians of India are hands down the best group that I've seen work together. Right. Right. Um, it's no secret that H-1B visas are a great source of um, talent for tech companies. Right. So in, in San Francisco, um, you'll see a, a lot of Indians that have traveled to the States to work on an H-1B visa, right? Whatever problems that they had back in India, because they got some stuff going on over there where me and you, oh, no, it's, it's, in complexion, oh, 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 we beat worse. It, But the thing is, like, poverty, over uh-huh. there is worse than anywhere on this planet. The uh-huh. issue is when they come, when they leave, they when they come to Africa, when they come here to America, the the arrogance is like so much that it's like I mean is 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 off the chain. Especially especially when I'm in East Africa, when I went uh-huh. to Kenya and Tanzania. Uh-huh. Oh man! But but go ahead. Uh, uh, right, so um, you, you do have that uh, that air of confidence slash arrogance from the very successful Indians, but the ones who are strappers like us, uh-huh. right? Who normally, if we were in India, just this shade difference would be a problem um, um, within the caste system. Uh-huh. Once they get outside of that environment and they're all hustling and working their asses off in in, in America, that caste system is out the window. Right. Right. You're not going to see that. Uh, I can't mess with you because you Punjabi and I'm not. Um, 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 Kind of thing, right? Just thinking um, together. I so I learned a lot. I learned a lot on how to communicate, work with other people, and just be humble with your fellow man. Um, in watching how Indians work together, mm-hmm. right? So in San Francisco, you have these great ecosystems that various groups have set up for themselves. The Australians call themselves the Australian Mafia. You had a group of French people; they call themselves the French Mafia. And it was just these pockets of communities that look out for their own. The only ones that didn't have that? <laughs> Let me guess. Well, 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 the only two that didn't have that, the American blacks and the Africans. Uh-huh. Right? So now you literally have this environment in San Francisco where if you are the one black person that works at that office, right, it, it, it's kind of like a threat. It, 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 it doesn't... There's no encouragement to like bring that second black guy in or that second uh, black woman in or, 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 or whatever, right? You are a little bit more fend offish because you got in. 
Right. You know how hard it is to get a job in San Francisco? You the one that got in, right? Right. The person you refer better be the freaking Jesus, mm -hmm. right? So if you have that constant um, thing where you're always the outsider trying to be in with the cool kids, right, and you're never creating your own group of cool kids, right? Um, then it's very, very tough to grow a product. That's why you haven't seen any billion dollar black tech startups coming up and about because it is really, really hard. We do not have the infrastructure or the support for it. And most importantly, we don't have the consumer base for it because the black consumer, the African consumer is not paying attention, is not looking for black tech products. Okay. Right? I've said it before, you can stop a hundred black people on the street Ask them to point to one app on their phone by a black developer, and you'll get zero out of 100. Hmm. Right? And it's not to their fault of theirs. It's, again, that subconscious, auto, auto programming of the subconscious, where you're just going about your day. Ooh, Flappy Brody school. I, I, that's what everybody's on to. I'll download it. Oh, Instagram. That's what everybody's on to. Cool. I'll download it. Right? These are subconscious actions that you're not really thinking about. Mm -hmm. So if no black media, on top of that is even giving you the opportunity to present your product then i am dead so even on world star right a rapper can pay 400 bucks to get their video up on world star right if i want to get a com a video about my company on world star it's going to cost me seven thousand bucks right because you're, you're looking about at, that. like advertisement and yeah yeah just yeah yeah it's it's no different than what the rapper is doing it's you know what I told? Okay, I, I did a difference. I mean, put out a hot a mix, mixtape right now, calling you NBF, ah, da, da, guns popping all over the place. It's gonna cost me four hundred dollars to do that. Four hundred dollars. Yeah, but when I want to actually like grow a billion dollar company that will hire people and transform communities, it's gonna cost me seven thousand. That's a problem. <sighs> and, and, and you're right. Then you're right. And I, we, we, we did a bit like, okay, I don't want to talk about World Star because I, yeah, I, I, that's another, you know, because we did a video on, you know, he, he passed away, but, you know, it wasn't so nice. Like, we necessarily weren't, you know, tripping that he passed away. I'll put it like that. But anyway, that's another video. That's another video, you know, whatever. Yeah, but uh, uh, let's see if we got any more, uh, any more questions in the, uh, in the chat room. Uh, let's see here. Let me ask you this. So, as far as will you ever consider relocating back to Africa? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, is that in the works at all, or is it? Are you still? It's very likely that within the next two years, I think a large n number of uh, a large part of my focus as a cryptocurrency will be in the continent. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, let's see. If we got any more questions in the chat room? With that being said, and Kelly Cavs brought up a great point, and we were talking about uh, black leadership in general. How do we hold our African leaders accountable? Because it seems like it's so hard to hold black leadership accountable for anything, just period. Okay. Right? Well, well uh, look, um, it all depends, right? I mean, we can have theoretical conversations. Uh -huh. right? um, we can propose this, that, and the other, but at the end of the day, you know, um, we're just two cats sitting. I'm in Washington D.C. You and your part of the world, no, and Africa, Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, right? <laughs> um, so there's an opportunity for disruption, unprecedented disruption, um, um, ongoing now. Right. Right. Where anybody who has an idea that the world needs this type of monetary policy versus this type of monetary policy, you can actually test that now. Uh -huh. Two lines of code, you can bring your idea out to life that this is the best monetary policy for the planet right now. Right. You can at least test it. Um, every single leader that we have a problem with, at some point, they're going to come across the blockchain. I seriously doubt that you're going to go two more American presidential elections without it, one of those being on the blockchain. If not the next one, then if not the, the one coming up in three years, Mm -hmm. The next one will definitely be on the blockchain, right? So leaders in various countries 
who um, you know are used to having their way with the political system, you know, they're going to have to answer to the blockchain at some point. Right. That that's just politically, right? However, in the meantime, there should be at least one, two, three, four, five, six x number of entrepreneurs in various countries and communities that are challenging their establishments right now. Right. Right. You're building a few. Um, 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 you're creating a cryptocurrency. You're creating an app. You're creating a, um, 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 this, that, and the other. Right. Um, at the end of the day, who's more powerful, um, Elon Musk or Donald Trump? Elon Musk. Well, 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 well. No, 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 no. Trump. Trump. Well, well, well. Uh, Trump I mean, it depends how you look at it. Because I mean, Trump is temporarily temporarily powerful because you know he, he has the. Uh, he has a lot of guns behind him. Right. Right. Um, but Elon literally killed the oil industry or is on the way of cutting the oil industry in half. Uh huh. Right. You didn't have a guy come in and say, hey, look, um, you know what? I want to create this electric car, but uh, let me go talk to the president first. And let me go see if our political leaders can, in any way, shape, or form, help us out because I really want to do this. No. All right, he took his own money, went and got to work. Right. And because of that quote unquote ba bravery, that entrepreneurial instinct, right, he's just as credible a global leader as anybody on the planet. And he doesn't you don't have to vote for him, you don't have to do anything political for the um, for the fellow, but he calls a lot of shots. Right? Mm -hmm. We are going to need a lot more entrepreneurs like that who do not need any kind of political process to cause change. All right, it's David Willis said that Elon Musk is getting a lot of government subsidies. Is that true? I think I think that is. He does get some money from the government. You... Well, um, all right, so that, that that is a genius entrepreneur who found a way to uh, to keep it going, to keep it moving, right? Minus the subsidi subsidies or not, before all that, he still made one hell of a brave decision to say, I'm going to put $100 million of my own money into trying to create an electric car. Mm -hmm. Right. So we are going to need piles and piles more entrepreneurs if you are going to want to compete with um, the aristocrats, bad presidents, bad leadership, and so on and so forth. Take it out of a political space and let's move it back into a space that actually matters, which is the entrepreneurial and the community space. Focus right. on the money. Okay. Hey, everybody in the chat room, thank you so much for uh, for joining us uh, this afternoon. I mean, this, you know, I want to make sure I bring value to our people because, again, there's just so much trash out there that, uh, you know, I'm glad that brothers like Anari and, you know, Brother Amir Ra, who we had on previously, could come on and, you know, and just drop jewels. So I, I appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, you know, we'll ask one more question and then Brother Anari, um, uh, we'll answer one more question. And then, Brother Nari, uh, I'll let you uh, go ahead and close it out, and, and you'll have the floor. Uh, brother in the chat room wants to know, um, he wants to know how to get started in uh, coding. Um, get how, brother? Well, you, well, you said you did it off of Google. You just, YouTube, Google. YouTube and Google. All okay. right, so uh, the very first thing that you could do right now is just type in and learn JavaScript. JavaScript is hands down the um, uh, most progressive language that you can learn right now. If you know JavaScript, you'll be able to build smart contracts on Solidity or the Ethereum platform. Right. right. And right now, all over San Francisco, there are 90-day code schools. This is something that our community is not hip onto either. There are literally 90-day code schools. You go to school for 90 days to learn JavaScript, and you're coming out making 80K a year starting. How much are the schools? Um, the schools will be anywhere between $18,000 and $24,000 for those 90 days. Do you think that's worth it? Let me ask you that. It's definitely one hundred percent worth it, guys. Do you hear that? Did, did we get down to the chat room? Right. Um, it, 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 there are a lot of four-year college folks who are dropping now to take the four to take the ninety-day code schools, uh -huh. right? Because worst-case scenario, at least you can freelance now. If you right. want to go back to if you want to go back to school, you'll be able to afford school a little bit better if you have that talent under your belt. Right. Okay, now as far as um, blockchain, teaching blockchain, where where would somebody go about learning that? Because I think that's like the next technology to really learn. Very, very true, right? Um, so start with JavaScript, 
right? Um, I'm stay focused focus on that because with JavaScript, again, you'll be able to build smart contracts and smart contracts are going to have an incredible time in the finance industry, right? Um, now, as far as the blockchain piece itself is concerned, you can just Google, um, all right, so whatever your favorite coin is, Ripple, Monero, whatever, chances are they all have a white paper, right? You can just Google the white paper for your favorite coin and read through that. Right? You may want to read through a few more and start getting yourself just a little bit acclimated with the wording, the vernacular, the, um, the terminology, and exactly how most blockchains work. Right? Now, if you want to get into developing blockchains, um, that's going to be a little more complex because this is literally a mathematician's playground. Right? Um, anybody with a nice math degree is having a ball right now. They're the prettiest girls in school right now. Mm -hmm. um, because for the first time in modern history, they're able to apply their math principles into an actual, um, into a, a life-changing product, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you will need to have a little bit more um, um, complex math know-how to build blockchains than just regular websites. Okay. I'll right, cool. help you guys uh, found some value in that. Can, can we ask one more question? Shoot, brother. It's all good. Okay, he wants to know, uh, NetSurfer wants to know, how do you feel about Ripple? Ripple is a solid product. Okay. Right. Um, I used to be anti-Ripple, okay. to be quite honest. So um, Ripple has been around for quite some time. Ripple came about maybe 2010, 2012, okay. right? between then. Um, they were initially like the first Ethereum, where you could actually create tokens on top of Ripple. Okay. Right? Um, the one problem that the cryptocurrency community had with Ripple is because it's 100% free mined, which means, going back to IOTA again, the folks of our Ripple already own all 99 billion coins. Mm -hmm. Again, 99 billion coins, right? So if Ripple ever hits $1, which it's very close to doing, they're, they're trillionaires. Right. Easily. Right. So the cryptocurrency um, our community had a problem with that. It wasn't until a few months ago where the folks of our Ripple said, okay, well, we're going to take 30 billion coins out of circulation and put them into escrow. That way you'll have the, the, the community would have a little bit more confidence about the price, right? Um, if you hold Ripple for at least five years, you'll be mm -hmm. a millionaire, right? Um, Ripple, if you have 10,000 Ripple right now, hold it for at least five years and you'll be a millionaire. Uh, because the space that Ripple is going after is the banks directly in that they're going after the SWIFT transfers, right? SWIFT transfers yeah. are about $3 trillion in transfers on a listen, day. Listen, listen. When I, when I send money, like my, so my buddy in Namibia, uh -huh. all right, where he's located, he doesn't have a Western Union or a money gram. Uh -huh. So I have to, for some reason, so with his bank, I have to send a SWIFT transfer. You uh -huh. know that SWIFT transfer costs like almost like 40 bucks, like yeah, 20, yeah, yeah. 40 bucks? Yeah, they make money. They it's make crazy. Money. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. All right, so Ripple wants to tear that up. Ripple's objective is to eliminate SWIFT, right? Um, and the really cool thing about the Ripple technology is every time these banks make transactions, a fraction of Ripple is actually burnt out of circulation. So okay. it starts out of the 99 billion coins now, but eventually you're going to see that number shrink down quite a bit. And that's why if you hold Ripple for at least five years, you'll be a millionaire. Wow. Wow. All right, brother. I mean, once again, thank you so much for uh, for coming on. Um, I'll let you go ahead and close out. You have the floor. Uh, I appreciate the time. Really, I do, brother. Uh -huh. um, you know, it's it's really going to be on us to have these kind of smart, creative conversations amongst our community. Uh -huh. um, I, I get in some some goosebumps sometimes in having these conversations because you know, you'll find some videos for me going probably back to 2012, 2011. I'm um, trying to get our people into Bitcoin, right? right. Um, all over Har um, uh, Harlem, um, I was on 125th trying to get the Moors and all of them red pill, blue pill, telling them about about Bitcoin. Took red pill out to lunch, and it still didn't budge, right? <laughs> I, um, I had my own cryptocurrency and I couldn't get my own community to buy that currency for even one cent. That was very, very frustrating simply because they did not understand the potential at that time. Right. Right. Um, we've come a really, really long way. I'm super glad and energized that the massive amount of um, people that are participating in the crypto space. Um, I'm glad that you are starting to see the 
you know, the true potential of this thing. Mm -hmm. Now, I always give folks advice to at least bury some portion of your Bitcoins. Right. Right. Get in your mind right now how much Bitcoins you want to put to the side. It can be 10% of a Bitcoin, 20% of a Bitcoin. You get a hold of that and you literally bury it in the backyard. You put it, um, um, you, you get what, an offline wallet. Make sure it can't be burnt. No insects can eat it, whatever. You can cut the private key in half, send one half of the private key to grandma in Texas. You keep the other one, right? But as long as you have it in your mind that you're going to set aside X number of Bitcoins that you're not going to touch for at least two years. Mm -hmm. I've lost a fortune in the Bitcoin space by simply losing Bitcoin addresses, right? Uh, so I'm advising that you set aside X number of Bitcoin that you're going to not touch for at least two years. After you do that, now you can start having some fun in the crypto space. You can trade, you can mine, you can you know um, do some sports betting, you can do whatever you want in the crypto space. As long as you got your 10% of a Bitcoin, 20% of a Bitcoin set aside and it's still making you money, regardless of what you're losing while, you pay up, while you're having a little bit of fun, mm -hmm. right? The second piece of it is if you don't already have a good circle of people, crypto people around you, you're going to need to get some friends right. in the crypto space. Right? You can go to meetup.com, Google Bitcoin meetups. You should be able to find a Bitcoin meetup in your city. If you don't have one, start one. That's the best way that you're going to be able to meet minds who are interested in having this conversation. Because if it's just you, you're going to be isolated. You're not going to get the best information. Right? You can imagine if you and your homie are all in a cryptocurrency, you can be at work and he's hitting you up. Hey, uh, IOTA's blowing up. Right? Hey, uh, Litecoin is up right now. You want me to get you some? Right. But at least you have that profit opportunity amongst friends and family. So it's very, very important that you get your friends and family involved in the crypto space if this is something that you really, really want to be a part of. Right. Um, and the very last thing is um, you know, the way that this is going to change the family dynamic is amazing. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, we have a legitimate opportunity to return back to the one parent at home household. Well, one parent is at home trading and mining. The other parent is, is out earning the greenbacks. Yes. Right. Um, we have an amazing opportunity to put our women in incredibly empowering positions. Yes. As a man, the best thing that you can do right now is slide your lady 50 bucks in Bitcoin, 100 bucks in Bitcoin, how much ever. Right. Mm -hmm. If she hasn't been participating in it already, because this is going to be the most empowering thing that you do for women in our community. Right. Um, the piles and piles of families who are having trouble with, you know, um, single parent household where the um, the money is just not what it is. You now have an easy way to supplement your income and actually be able to provide a better life for the young people in your homes. Right. So please pay attention to the uh, family benefits of the technology as well, because um, once you once you do that, um, it, it, it's going to move a little bit past just um, um, making profit here and there for you. OK. Also, too, uh, if you can give people your contact information, I'll put it in the well, we put your website in the chat, but also I'll put it in the description box. But go ahead and give people your contact information so they could know how to reach out to you. Uh, that's a bit. Um, you can easily just reach out to me on Facebook. That's um, the easiest way. Um, Anari Singh Bay on Facebook. Okay. Um, now, if you would like to be a part of the OWO community, then please join our Discord. Um, this is a community group where you'll have 24 hour access to getting all your cryptocurrency um, questions answered. If it's not directly by me, there will be OWO, other OWO team members in the chat room and other OWO community members that will answer any cryptocurrency question that you have, trading, mining, blockchain, whatever. Um, our job, our goal is really to be the leading educators in this space for anybody. Okay. Absolutely. Man, brother, I, I really appreciate it, man. It was definitely an honor to get you on. Uh, it's just, like I said, this did... Shows like this is what our people need to hear and listen to. And you're offering great value, man. And they need to hear this instead of watching, you know, all the crap that we're, that's put in front of us. Uh, so, so thank you so much for coming on. Uh, everybody, make sure you guys subscribe. If you're new to the, the channel, make sure you subscribe. Search for Huru. Like the video. Share the videos. Also, search for Huru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. 
Uh, make sure you go to searchforhuru.com. Make sure you go to uh, dynastamir.com. And also make sure you go to amazon.com, search your name, Dynasty Mirror. I've written several books, so please support and buy them. Guys, once again, thank you so much for joining the chat. Brother Nari, thank you so much for coming on uh, this day. Uh, enjoy your time. Enjoy your Sunday, everybody. I'll probably be, ba be back on later on today. So everybody, thank you so much. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Till next time, search for who, peace. <laughs>